Thank you for downloading from Digital Mindfulness. This is episode number 41. Hello and welcome to the show. My guests today are the founders of MindApps, Magnus Fried and Martin Wickfork. Magnus and Martin founded the company, which has developed popular mindfulness and digital wellness applications, such as Sleep Smart, Breathing Space, and the Mindfulness app. And all of these applications have now reached global popularity. In this episode, we talk about their motivations for developing mobile mindfulness apps and also about the future possibilities for such technology. I hope you enjoy this episode with Magnus and Martin. So, Magnus and Martin, thank you so much for joining us here on Digital Mindfulness. Um, It's an absolute pleasure to have you on and to be talking about the amazing work that you're doing. So, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure being here. So, um, again, this is kind of the first question I ask everyone that comes on the show, but I'm wondering if you can both just share your stories and how you came to be working um, so deeply within the mindful technology community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my story goes back to when I was uh, something like in the late uh, teenager. Uh, uh, now I'm 45, so it's quite a long, long time back. Uh, and I, um, I came across Tibetan Buddhism because my parents were interested in Tibetan culture. And we had a, they had a sponsor child in uh, India at that time who, who was a Tibetan. Uh, and I, I somehow got very interested and I started to study Tibetan culture and also meditation. Uh, and that kind of uh, took my life into a new direction uh, because I, my academic career was a bit focused on that. I studied the history of literature, literature with focus on uh, Asian literature and uh, Tibetan poet called Milarepa in particular. And uh, then I studied Indology for three years uh, we focus on Tibetan language and Tibetan culture and uh, Sanskrit language and at the same time I studied uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhist with one of the few Tibetan Buddhist communities at that time in Sweden I mean it was quite different if you were interested in meditation at that time you had to go to to, to the more uh, those communities that were more how to say a bit more religious in their approach uh, so I, I was in the, the in the board for uh, for a couple of years there, and uh, uh, I was close to a Tibetan Lama who, who came to Sweden uh, to give give his teaching to to the to the community here. Uh, and occasionally, I also became his English teacher for a few years. Um, so so that's um, that's um, my my way into it. Okay. Okay, and uh, uh, for me it was uh, kind of a, in the beginning it was more of an interest. Uh, I was uh, studying uh, uh, political science and international relations and uh, I was drawn to this somehow and I, I maybe I didn't really understand it at the time. I, I was living in London uh, studying and it was a rather stressful time for me. And uh, I tried out both uh, Qigong and, and uh, meditation at that, that time, I remember. Uh, but it wasn't uh, until uh, uh, a little bit later that I started both with yoga and, and meditation in a little bit more organized way. Um, I uh, did my first uh, uh, Vipassana retreat in 2002. Uh, in Thailand at that time and uh, then uh, I was working for uh, uh, the United Nations uh, and living had the fortune to live in Myanmar uh, for over four years and there I I got uh, uh, further uh, uh, into uh, the culture of meditation that had transpired there uh, in terms of the different teachers that uh, uh, teachings that were available in in uh, Myanmar, so that was a very inspiring time. And then uh, uh, my wife and I 
decided to then to change career and we moved back to Sweden and open up a yoga and meditation studio in 2007. Uh, so that's a little bit about my uh, background. Fantastic. So um, it's really interesting that you both actually do have um, a contemplative background and I'm really interested to know why you both believe that meditation now in the 21st century and being present is so important, particularly in the digital age, because surely the world just wants us to speed up. Mm -hmm. I think first, I think since I started, I, I've seen I've seen the popularity of meditation. It's going a little bit up and down, and uh, there have been like peaks before. I remember one peak uh, around uh, uh, like something like uh, ninety in the nineties when Dalai Lama got the Nobel Peace Prize. So in Scandinavia, a lot of people were interested in what he. Uh, about his books and his message. And then also there were um, a peak, um, I think late 90s, and it came with all the celebrities that occasionally started to talk about Buddhism, and like Richard Gere and a couple of uh, other celebrities got kind of close friends with Dalai Lama, and uh, they were, I think they were quite serious practitioners. And Richard Gere also started up the uh, House of Tibet in New York, if I remember right. Mm. But but now it's totally uh, it's totally all over the place, and I, th I think it's um, I think it's quite hard to answer that. But I think I, uh, a deeper answer would also be that we are totally uh, non connected to the to the Christian tradition anymore uh, over here in Scandinavia, and uh, but but I think there is a deeper need. To be with all that freedom that is now a norm in the society, there is a deeper need to feel some kind of connection to anything. Mm. And uh, I think uh, yoga they had a quite, uh, it was a little bit easier for the yoga tradition because it's, it, it's uh, dealing with a, with a physical body. And you can, you can go into the world of yoga just, just for the fitness uh, but sooner or later, you you will come to that point that you have to deal with the mental part as well. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's something there that you you there's some some uh, you lack something, you miss something in your life mm -hmm. that you want to and you want to fill that gap with something. And and the doorway in the doorway, I think that filter can be. It appears in many different ways. Maybe uh, someone would only explain it like I have a I have a feeling of stress in my life, or I have a hard to focus. But uh, and and that's a perfect way to to start practicing. But on a deeper level, I think there is something you have. A, you feel that you're missing some kind of tool to connect with your your uh, your your own personality. And I guess, you know, I guess what I'd like to do now is really talk about the different tools that you've created because um, they're, they're absolutely amazing and definitely I've used them. And I'm wondering if you can just talk a little bit more about the apps that you've developed and especially for people who perhaps don't know very much about, um, you, about I don't know, cultivating a regular um, mindfulness practice um, because... I don't know, to some people, they can they maybe see that, um, I don't know, there are lots of different um, meditation apps on the app stores or on Google Play or whatever. But I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about the apps and what kind of, the, particularly the mindfulness and the, mind, the meditation app and kind of what drove you to, um, to create that and how successful that's been. Uh, I think that um, the the origins of of the app uh, was very much uh, uh, in a, a meeting uh, with Magnus and I. We had a, a common uh, interest and work at that time, so we were both teaching yoga and uh, and also mindfulness. So, and in that setting, we, when teaching mindfulness, we noticed that. Uh, there was a difficulty for uh, the participants to remember, and that's one of the most difficult things with mindfulness, to remember to be mindful. So we had a, 
a three minute uh, breathing space that uh, uh, you were supposed to do every day three times and uh, we noticed that uh, in the sessions that people found it so difficult and you think it's just three minutes three times it's not a lot of time so we we figured why don't you put a post-it note on your computer or uh, why don't you do it when you eat breakfast, lunch and dinner and we, we tried a, a different, uh, a lot of different methods and some of them were successful for some time but it was really difficult. So we were thinking of how can we make a tool for people to remember this and then there is this, uh, it, it might not be so well known in, in uh, other parts of uh, and this turtle, he has all kinds of different tools in his shell. Mm. And one of the things he has is a eat and sleep watch. So no matter what he's doing, if the sleep watch goes off, he goes to sleep. And so we thought, okay, but couldn't we do a eat and sleep watch, but for mindfulness? Uh, so that people really prioritize to do mindfulness. And at that time, uh, it was just at the starting point where uh, the App Store was uh, coming into play. And uh, because first we thought about making a physical product, but then we thought, oh, this is the perfect avenue for, uh, for our tool. Mm -hmm. So using uh, uh, the mobile device in that uh, time, and, and there was, of course, a discussion around that is is it uh, appropriate uh, to uh, to be on that side on the technology side because that's creating so much uh, distractions as well uh, but then we so we developed the app in a way as an antidote uh, it's a it's an anti app in a way it's it's an app that rather that connects you out in d different networks and so on with different people it's something actually that creates or connects you internally that was the whole idea. And, and it was also to make it a simple tool, whether uh, you have practiced mindfulness before or just a beginner. And uh, we also decided to make it very plain and uh, void of different symbols that had a, a cultural heritage uh, so on, so that everybody should be comfortable having it uh, on, on the phone. Mm. And also, you can just say to, to put the app in, uh, in, in time, uh, we released the app 2011, and uh, at that time it was a Swedish version um, and an uh, international English version. But uh, since then we have uh, developed 15 different language specific uh, versions, uh, all from the Nordic languages to, to Japanese and um, a lot of European languages. And that's an ongoing process because we think there is an. A, you, you you can't take for sure that the knowledge about English is the same the world over. Mm. And I think it's an intimate thing of practice, practicing meditation. So um, together with authorized mindfulness teachers all over the world, we want to to to, to do um, uh, specific versions in each and every country. So how does that actually work? Because the way that the app is structured is that you have um, meditations from some of the um, most well-known mindfulness teachers in the world. Yeah. But um, how, yeah, I was wondering if you can just, I don't know if I just explained it there, but if you can tell us how that works and also how that works in different languages as well. <laughs> Well, there is a basic, actually, there is a basic app that, that uh, uh, gives you uh, a, a couple of features like reminders and about uh, five, six, seven uh, audio guided, uh, get started practices, mm. and there are statistics and a couple of other features. But then uh, as an add-on to that, there is an, an in-app store. Uh, and in the English version, um, we also update it to, to a more extensive library with courses and challenges and single meditation. And in that library, we work together with uh, the American company Sounds True that provides us with all those uh, wonderful courses and uh, uh, exercises from, from, as you said, uh, the world foremost mindfulness teachers like John kabat and Eckhart Tolle and so on. Uh, so that's an add-on and you can you can... Buy, uh, do a buyout for a small, small uh, extra cost, or you can you can subscribe up on that library. 
but that's that's a free will of course and you can you can just uh, use that as it is also that's fabulous and of course you've also got um, in addition to the mindfulness app you also have the breathe app yes breathing space yes breathing space yes yeah. so how is that different uh, the breathing space is is really a, a tool to uh, help you to breathe better. So the mindful in mindfulness, you don't try to uh, uh, change or uh, modify your breath, uh, but uh, in the breathing space app, you actually practice in practice sessions how to breathe uh, a deeper uh, uh, breath than you normally do. Many of us have a very shallow uh, breathing pattern and, and that's uh, contributes and uh, to a vicious cycle of stress as well because you don't use the proper uh, muscles uh, for breathing so the breathing app is really a way to to improve your breath um, and work towards a, a longer breathing ratio and and by that improving your health so you're using uh, as a short description. You're using the microphone to assess uh, the, the actual uh, ratio of your breathing, uh, and based up on that, uh, the app will suggest a uh, ratio for you. So suppose that you you measure twenty cycles of breath per minute. Uh, the app will help you uh, with a visual and audio guide to go down like below ten breaths per minute over a time of one or two minutes, something like that. That's great. And and I'm going to get into um, the final one that's, that you have, which is Sleep Smart. But yeah. was, the, was the inspiration behind doing the breathing, um, the breathing space and also the mindfulness app, was, was the inspiration behind that problems that you both were facing in your life? Like, were you very conscious that you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I don't, you know, that my life is quite stressed now. And, um, w you know, were you trying to implement a contemplative practice yourselves? Mm. Absolutely. I mean, in, in mm. terms of uh, um, the problems that you mentioned in terms of stress or other difficult uh, things that have occurred uh, in, in my own life, at least, I, I, those tools have been uh, invaluable um, uh, not to say that they've solved all these issues, but they really helped me to uh, uh, to kind of manage uh, through life, and uh, and hence uh, the further development in in both uh, becoming yoga teacher and and further practice in, uh, for instance, uh, pranayama. Then has then showed me the benefits uh, of of having a, a deeper breath or of moving your body and, and uh, how that can help you to deal with stress and get perspective on things uh, in life in a completely different way. So, so in that way, I, I, I think, uh, and I, I think I speak for both of us saying that we are not uh, normal entrepreneurs in that way. We are more uh, accidental entrepreneurs and, and we wouldn't start up any uh, uh, kind of startup company, but uh, it is this area that that we have a huge interest in. Mm. It's, it, some, I guess one of the questions that I tend to ask guests when they come is um, whether they believe that mindfulness um, or a mindfulness practice is the one and only thing that you know that will reduce stress or that will give us balance in a digital age. But um, but looking at the apps that you've did that you've created here, you know. Um, the mindfulness app, you know, the sleep smart app, it seems that you can see almost that mindfulness is just one part of a stress reduction toolkit in the in the digital age. Um, so I'm interested, what comes after sleep smart? You know, if there's mindfulness and then we've got the learning to breathe and then we're learning to sleep better, what do you think comes next? Um, actually, I think we're still quite a small company. Uh, mm. We're seven persons in the team, and and even if an app seems for the world maybe not so big, <laughs> it's quite a lot of work. And um, I think we, what we are doing right now is that we are going back to the mindfulness app and uh, give that um, 
up more time and we want to do uh, a couple of uh, uh, updates to the app uh, and uh, while we implemented the more extensive library it will take a lot of time from us to to uh, keep it up to date and uh, keep on implementing interesting and quality quality material content to the users mm. and uh, we are also uh, uh, very much into learning uh, what what do the users need on their journey uh, so that's also what we learn from data from the app and uh, we get feedback from users and uh, to, to constantly make it better. Uh, so, so I don't think I don't think at the moment that you will see uh, a fourth uh, fourth app, uh, a Joe app or something from Mind Apps. I, I think uh, I think you will uh, more see a, um, a focus on the mindfulness app, and for for those users who follow us uh, along the, that journey, will uh, will see a lot of things happening in the app uh, within. Yeah, the coming years and our our I mean our um, our wish is to work with this for a very long time. And then we never know where, where the technique takes us. Maybe there come new devices with new possibilities, and you never know. At the moment, we are looking into the Apple Watch. We will do something for Apple Watch, and maybe also for Apple TV. Um, Great. So, so that's what, what will probably the next steps for the company. Are you both finding, I guess, from the from the data that you're getting back, are you finding that in general that people are experiencing more stress? So that's why they're um, um, kind of coming to um, um, applications to help them have a mindfulness practice. Or are you finding that people are just more aware of their stress? Actually, they're thinking, like, "Oh my God, you know, I know that I'm stressed out now, and I need to do something." about this or do you think that this is just a more stressful time in which we're living i think uh, in um, it, it's a little bit difficult for us to say uh, uh, because we normally don't get that uh, information on on a bigger scale so it's we we get some testimonials of this of course that uh, people use it because of increased stress and so on, but we, we can't uh, take it out uh, from, from any data that we have. But I think it, it could be both, uh, both ways, but I think definitely what is happening also when, um, when people are given, so to speak, freedom, they, they, they can work from home because they have a device and they, they are constantly also connected to, and, and it, it might also mix up uh, the the traditional working time and, and leisure time a lot so uh, in mm. that sense I think it could be a cons uh, like a uh, uh, that people don't get a break from the stress in a way yeah. that there isn't the normal re- recuperation time even on weekends or evenings mm. and so on so I I think definitely that that mm. could play into it mm. and if I com if I compare to I mean we we are uh, so old, so we we are well aware of the uh, how it was before, uh, so which also plays a role, I think. Uh, uh, but I can see my daughter; she's fifteen. Tomorrow she she will be fifteen, and uh, if I compare to who I was when I was fifteen, you can totally see that it changed. Mm-hmm. See, she is online almost every minute, and. Uh, that's how she meet her friends. Of course, she meets them uh, live as well. But uh, and um, and uh, apps like uh, Keek Messenger and Snapchat and also Instagram, not Facebook. They are not interested in Facebook. But the, the three I mentioned first, they have a huge impact on that uh, that group. Uh, and I think it's go uh, even lower in ages. And uh, we, I mean. I can I can see a high stress level there compared mm-hmm. to when I was a fifteen, and uh, that's that's also a big uh, challenge I think for all of us working with mindfulness that we that we keep how to how to say the commercial interests out and really try to do something good for this new generation because I think they they will have a completely. Uh, there, there will be bigger problems, I think. 
Yeah. That will be harder because they, they live their lives online. So they can't relate to what was before. Yeah. Uh, so it will be even much more important to, to create really good good tools. But in the, on the other hand, they are very open for the, for digital digital the digital world. So maybe that's where we really can make a difference as well. Because we, we can't we can't tell them uh, close down <laughs> because the friends are there and the, their communities there life is happening there for them mm. so that we have to we have to understand that. So um, what I really wanted to know is um, how would you both recommend that people try to create a positive relationship with their digital devices and also with digitized society. Mm. I think that uh, <clears throat> in that respect, I think that mindfulness could be really uh, an important thing because there are, of course, very strong forces in this digitalization that are driven for a certain interest and certain purposes. And, uh, and I think that uh, you constantly get a certain message uh, uh, bombarded with you and and uh, after a while it, it might be difficult to to how to be aware of what is happening so so i think in that way mindfulness can be, really be helpful to untangle that uh, jungle of of uh, bombardment so to speak to see okay where am i and what is what is important for me uh, what are my values and and what do i uh, what do I agree on and not, and not just get uh, get taken into the flow, into the river, uh, so to speak. And I, I can also see that of <clears throat> on my uh, oldest daughter, and she's only ten, uh, and the way that she can look through uh, PR and advertising, if uh, it's, it's amazing. I was not at all at that level at her age. Uh, she's very m- much more critical. To, to the kind of messaging that is coming out. Mm. So I think it's, it's a lot of being aware, being educated. Mm. And then I mm. think digitalization can be really uh, mm. beneficial for you. Mm. But, but you have to be able to pick and choose and not mm. take the entire mm. uh, package, so to speak. Mm. And there, there might be uh, like a, another kind of smartness <laughs> in that new generation so probably they will deal with it in a, in a new way as well so, and I think uh, an important thing as a, as a parent that is that not only tell all over and over again how bad it is and it will create stress and, because uh, I mean one thing I think it's very important that when you're there why not enjoy it but the borders uh, and the limitations are very important that you understand and how to to uh, create those uh, yourself because it's a free it's, there there is an individual freedom. But for me, for example, I just started to to uh, to to never bring any digital devices into my bedroom, uh, and, and I'm one of those who have uh, occasionally quite bad sleeping problems. Uh, even if I do daily meditation, so that, that's my life. But uh, that's made a big difference. I was I was amazed, and uh, it, not only that I sleep better, but also it took me back to to my big interest in reading literature. And now I read so much more than I did before, and I really enjoy it. And and the, the, this you know this good uh, feeling of getting tired and sleepy uh, occurs in a very nice way. Uh, um, so, so now I, I, I'm gladly leaving the, the devices out of the bedroom. So, so I mean, it's quite, quite, a, quite, it's quite simple to do uh, changes. It, it, almost uh, uh, when you talk about it, it feels that it, that was nothing special to say. But, uh, but it, it actually, it, it makes a difference, and that's interesting. So that's when we come back to mindfulness, where we're talking about that only three minutes, five minutes. It's, it's, it makes a difference. So this is um, this is my penultimate question um, that um, that I ask every guest. Um, but I'm wondering for you both, what do you both consider to be the most important human quality that we possess in the digital age, and how do how can we cultivate it? That must 
no, maybe too fast. But I, I would say compassion. Mm. I would say so. Because, I mean, you can be practicing mindfulness just for your own self and decrease stress and you can be more focused and in the worst case you can be like an even worse person than before just more focused to to go on your ego ride but but i think if if it, if you're if you're consistent and patient in your exercises and really listens carefully that that will uh, open uh, some kind of uh, compassion and of course self compassion is part of that and then um, if that grows of course, it, it 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 will it will show in your uh, in your life. Yeah, I also also think both awareness and compassion are, are really important uh, <clears throat> tools in the digital area. Also, because you don't have that uh, physical uh, meeting where you can actually read the other person's uh, uh, not only the speech but also the the way they move, the way they look, etc. And mm-hmm. when you don't have that. I think that it's really important mm. to to have those qualities in yourself when you communicate in, in the digital world. And I, I think we see a lot of, of uh, uh, comments on, on Facebook that uh, uh, on, on certain things mm. that happens that I think normally would never be presented mm. uh, uh, if, if the persons were actually meeting each other uh, physically. So I think that that's something that uh, re- is a really important thing uh, mm. and that needs to be mm. developed. And to choose the, the positive patterns. And that's, a, I mean, that's a result. I, I, I think that's, uh, Buddha said that in some teaching, that, that the result of meditation is that you actually stand in front of a crossroad that you can, you have the choice to choose the positive patterns instead of the negative patterns. And um, uh, I think that's very important. Brilliant. Um, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the interview, but where can people find out more about you and your work? They can they can go to our website mindapps.se, and uh, I would I would uh, say that please visit our um, our journal on the website. Uh, there is a we post a lot of blog posts, interesting blog posts there, and we have collaborations with uh, a lot of ambassadors uh, all over the world actually writing in interesting testimonials about their own journey and uh, about uh, different topics. And uh, we're also, please connect with us. We're always open to work with, uh, with interesting people. And uh, you don't have to be uh, anybody who has uh, uh, this many K followers on Instagram or anything like that. We, we're all, always interested to discuss and collaborate with people who are uh, um, interested in this um, field. And of course, spread the world of mindfulness globally. Um, so, so uh, and on the website, of course, you you, you find uh, more info about the apps as well. But, uh, but uh, yes, so mindapps.se. Brilliant. Well, Magnus and De Martin, thank you so much for spending time with us here at Digital Mindfulness. Um, I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It was yes. really nice talking to you, and best of luck with your uh, podcast. Thank yes. you. Your work. Thanks Great a lot. Work. Thanks. Yeah.